Okay. I know that Ricky was thinking about coming over to our parking lot service today, so he wasn't sure, but um, I have my children's story already recorded. So here, live from Spring Hill. Christine, did you want to pull it up or you want me to pull it up? Okay. I'm going to um, share my screen and uh, play the recording here. Um, so let's just see what I can do. Share screen. I'm going to go over to here. Hi, boys and girls. I'm just so happy to be with you today. And I'm going to be talking to you about the first little pet my sons ever got when they were little boys. Now, we started with a very small pet, and then we got bigger and bigger until we got a black lab. But that's a story for another time. We started with a very small pet that my boys just thought was so cute. Now, for the boys and girls living in Florida, this may sound a little silly, but my boys just could not wait to get this pet. Can you imagine? It was a pet lizard. <laughs> in Connecticut, you don't find lizards outside. You just find them at pet stores. And Eric wanted a green animal in the worst way. And so Eric and Jeff set up their little glass aquarium and we went to the store and they found their little lizard. Now when we went to Florida for the first time on vacation, they couldn't believe it. There were lizards everywhere. <laughs> and I guess we really looked like tourists because we would stop and say, oh, isn't that one cute? Oh, wow. And the boys would try to chase them and catch them and we just couldn't believe it. And then when we finally moved to Florida, we got used to it. I mean, lizards are everywhere here. Lizards are on the sidewalk. Lizards are sitting on a leaf sunning themselves. Lizards are crawling up walls. You open the door and lizards are everywhere. Well, did you know that yesterday I discovered a Bible verse about a lizard? But before I share it with you, I thought you might like to know a little bit about how God has very uniquely designed the lizard so he can make his way in the world. The first thing I thought was kind of interesting is that there are so many different kinds of lizards. In fact, there are more than 4,000 kinds of lizards. God just made them so interesting. Did you know that he designed their eyes to have eyelids like we do so they can blink and their eyes are protected? But some kinds of lizards don't have eyelids, but God had a plan for them too. So he has a special covering over their eyes and it keeps the dirt out of the eyes and it keeps the bright sunlight from getting in their eyes like their own special built-in contact lenses or something. And if their eyes need to be cleaned out, no problem. They just use their tongues. And speaking of lizard tongues, did you know that lizards smell with their tongues? That's right. They stick out their tongues and they catch these little scent particles in the air. Then they pull their tongues back into their mouths. They put their tongue on the roof of their mouth and there God has it designed. So on the roof of their mouth, they have these special cells now that can figure out, oh, that's where the enemy is. Better stay away. Oh, that's where the food is. Better go there. Isn't God amazing? Oh my goodness, there's just so much to say about lizards. Just a few more things about lizards. We know about camouflage, right? Lizards are very good at that and they can stay very still for hours. So nobody will even know they're there. And if somebody does try to grab them by the tail, God has a plan for that. He's built a weak spot right into their tails so that it breaks off and the person's just there holding a tail and the lizard will grow back another one anyway. Oh, there's so many different kinds of lizards that have different ways of keeping safe. One kind of skink has a fat end on the tail that looks like another head. So if his enemy comes along, he just curls up into a little C shape and it looks like he's two-headed and it scares his enemy away. Now the horned lizard squirts blood out of his eyes to scare away his predators. Woo -hoo. I don't like that. The Australian frilled lizard has this loose skin around his neck and he just puffs it out and looks a lot bigger. That scares away his enemies. Oh wow, I could just go on and on. But let's get back to that Bible verse. What does the Bible have to say about a lizard? Proverbs 30, 28 says, 
A lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. You know what I think that means? I think that means that, you know, a lizard's not a big deal. You find them everywhere. They're just a little creature. But even a lizard can end up in a king's palace. So, you know, if you start thinking like you're all that, and you're the top of the game, and you're better than other people, just remember, even a lizard can be found in a king's palace. <laughs> so I think Proverbs is saying that to help us stay humble. What do you think? Would you like to draw a lizard now? They're really easy to draw. Let's give it a try. All right, boys and girls, are you ready to start drawing your lizard? It's really not hard. Let's start over here. So you're going to start at the bottom right of your paper, and you're starting with his little face. And it really, you just have to make kind of like a triangle, a little rounded triangle. I didn't make the end of it, but you can, because then you can always erase that side of it if you want. And then you come out a little round his face. His face is a little rounded here. Then we're gonna make his neck, okay? And now we're gonna make his arms. And his hands are interesting, aren't they? Because they have those little pads on the end that are kind of circular. So you can make a little bump on the end if you want. That's where he can stick to things, right? He can stick to windows. And then you make his arm come back down to his body, okay? And then we're gonna make his other arm over here. This will come out and kind of go in and then you're an expert at his little fingers now, right? You make him go out a little bump for those suction cups where he can stick to your window and look in on you. <laughs> Okay, this little finger. The hands are very distinctive on a lizard, right? Okay, and then we'll make his body kind of rounded. Okay, and then we got to make his tail. Got a long tail. Come on out. Okay, now we got to just make his back legs. And I think you know what to do now. You know the drill, the little round pads. Go around and down. Three, four, five. And there's one of his legs, okay? And now we'll make his other leg. Let me just move my little palette out of the way. All right, so he's gonna be coming down here and then over one, two, I'm kind of running out of room on mine, three, four, five, and then down and over. And there you go. He's really not hard, is it? Now we're gonna make his eyes and um, I'm gonna give him some black eyes and they're just here on the side of his head. They're not hard to make at all. Okay, there's one, and we'll go over to here. Here's two, and there you go. And now let's decorate our lizard so we can make some stripes. You can actually make whatever you want because remember how many kinds of lizards are there in the world? There's 4,000 different kinds. So I'm guessing that whatever you pick for a design, you will probably find one of those 4,000 lizards that kind of looks like that. So nobody needs to say, oh, yours doesn't look like the teacher's, yours doesn't look like mine. No, God made all different kinds. So you can make whatever you want, and then you can start researching lizards. And I'm guessing that of those 4,000 kinds, you'll probably find one that looks like yours. Like I probably made mine's tail a little too fat. But I'm guessing maybe there's something called the fat-tailed lizard. Who knows? So this is yours. It doesn't need to look like mine. And with so many different kinds in the world, God is teaching us something else. He's teaching us that in nature, things are all different kinds. You know, they're all different, that there's all different kinds of beauty, that things don't have to look exactly the same to be okay. That's a good lesson to learn. So yours won't look like mine, mine won't look like yours, that's okay. 
make it however you want and make your own pattern and design. It's kind of exciting, isn't it? I like to see things that are different. That's called variety. And I actually love variety. I don't want everything to look the same. So let's just see how yours is going to come out. I can't wait to see yours. Here we go. Okay, that was kind of a fun way to do it. Now I think I'm going to pick a brown color and I'm going to put some brown in mine to make a little variety. So the rest of his body is going to be brown. Does that mean yours has to be brown? Of course not. You can make yours however you want. But here's mine with a little bit of brown here. Okay. And then just finish yours up. Add your color. And I hope you enjoyed learning about the lizard. I hope you do a little more research on lizards and find out. I only mentioned a little bit. There was a lot I learned when I was reading. I thought, oh, what shall I tell the boys and girls? There's so much I could tell them about the lizard. God is amazing, you know, he makes these animals so that they know how to take care of themselves. I love the camouflage thing too that a lot of the animals use. It's really an interesting way to hide. And the lizard knows how to keep so still for hours. He can sit there not even moving. You might be walking by lizards and you don't even know it because you think they're part of the rock. That's part of the camouflage. I'm actually almost finished here. Let's see what we have. I'm gonna make his head kind of, there we go. Okay, there's your lizard, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to stay humble, stay curious, and keep your eyes peeled for God's handiwork in nature. Okay, Christine, take it away. See who drew with us. Um, well, maybe I'll ask. Okay, let's see who has a picture to show us. And I'm going to see if I can spotlight. Just a minute now, just a minute. Spotlight for everyone. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yeah, I like him. He's really cute. Nice, nice. And what about your sister? Does she have something over there too? Look at that. Wow, that is beautiful. Very nice. She loves using bright colors. That is really nice. Both of you did a tremendous job. Thank you so much for drawing with us today. That looks wonderful. Okay, look at that fancy watch Ricky has on there. My goodness. He must know the time, the date, and everything he needs to know with that fancy watch. <laughs> I will never excuse it if you're not on time with a fancy watch like that. All right, just teasing you. Okay, I'm going to remove that spotlight. Now, let's see. Is there anyone else that is trying to hold up something? I don't want to miss anybody. Let me see here. Anybody else wants to show theirs? A lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces, Proverbs 30, 28. So if you think you're really important, you're so important, you could live in the king's palace. Remember, even a lizard can live in the king's palace. So I think in Proverbs, they're trying to tell you, stay humble because even a lizard can be caught with a hand. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much that you made so many beautiful things. Everything around us, keep us curious so that we look at things like tiny lizards and beautiful tiny little flowers all the way up to the biggest animals like giraffes and elephants. Let us see your beauty and the hummingbirds and the little bees and butterflies and everything around us. Keep us curious and keep us close to you so that we always know when we see this beauty that this is what you've put on our earth for us. Thank you. I pray that the church service will go well, that you'll be with us, that the technology will work, and that we can bless you with our service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. At this time, our children's story is going to be brought to us by Nicole Johnson. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Um, well, it's children's story time, and today's children's story is about being young or a youth and since it's children's story who better to speak yeah. to than the youth now 
our scripture today is going to be taken from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, which says, let no man despise thy youth, right? And it goes on to say, but, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Right? So, would you believe that Coco and Poppy used to be youth? Well, particularly me, I used to be a youth. A little Coco, right? And when I was a little Coco, my grandfather used to be like, oh, you're going to cut the grass? And I would watch him cut the grass, right? But this particular day, he said, you're going to cut the grass. And I was like, but I'm a little girl. And he told me, well, you can do anything that anybody else can do. And you can, because you're young, doesn't mean you can't do it. If you start when you're young, by the time you get older, you'll be perfect at it. So he had me cut the grass with a push mower. Now, I don't know if you guys know what a push mower is, but it's not like the lawnmowers we have today where you hit a button or pull a string and it just kind of guides. You had to push and pull and push and pull. And it was hard. It was tiresome. And I started off with a little section. But by the time I was about 12, I can cut the whole grass with no help from anybody. So I'm going to bring you into a Bible story of, of young people so you can understand where we're going today. Samuel. Do you know who Samuel was? Brian, you know who Samuel was, right? Yes. Samuel was dedicated to the Lord from a little person. His mother dedicated him. And when he was younger, he was living with the priest Eli, and he kept hearing Samuel, Samuel. And he would go to Eli, and he'd be like, did you call me? And Eli would say, no, go back to sleep. And then he would hear again, Samuel, Samuel. And he would go back to Eli, and he would say, did you call me? And he would say, no. So by the time he came back again, Eli told him, answer it. It was the Lord calling him at a wee little boy, a young man. And I know in our churches, we have some young people that the Lord has called, who has given a talent to, who has given a charge to. And I know through this pandemic, where we are a little disconnected, that it may seem like the young people, y'all have nothing to do. But I'm here to tell you today that you still have work to do for the kingdom of God. Just like my grandfather had work for me to do, just like Samuel had work to do, and David as a young man had work to do, Esther had a work to do. I know that there's some young people in the Spring Hill Church, like Omira, who can sing who can do some work for the furthering of God's kingdom we have out here. Um, Aaron, who is using his talent this morning for the furthering of God's kingdom. We have Ricky and Dixie and Chloe. We have Soraya and um, Layla and Laisha. And I'm pretty sure in Brooksville, there's some young people there who has plenty of talent and work to do for the furthering of God's kingdom. I want to encourage you this week. I want you to look at yourselves. And as this week goes on, I want you to find whatever talent or whatever calling God has given to you, and I want you to work it. I don't want you to let anybody tell you that you're too small or too young or not wise enough because God has you exactly where you need to be. Now, Elder Johnson is going to read a final thing, and in this week, I want all of you guys to come together, and I want you to figure out as our churches begin to open up and we do things what it is that you can do to help God's kingdom as a young person. All right, church. This is the common English version of 1 Timothy 4, verses 12 through 16. It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Instead, set an example for the believers through your speech, behavior, love, faith, and by being pure. Until I arrive, pay attention to public reading, to preaching and teaching. Don't neglect the spiritual gift in you that was given 
to prophecy when the elders laid hands on you. Practice these things and live by them so that your progress will be visible to all. Focus on working on your own development and on what you teach. If you do this, you will save yourself and those who hear you. So, I'm looking forward to all the young people as we get ready to come back together. And remember, you are all powerful and you are worthy in God's kingdom. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come together for prayer with the young people, I ask that as you take them through this week and you allow them to stand up and be mighty like David and Samuel and Esther. And I ask that you touch every last one of them and help them to be a light and a beacon unto your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.